Hey, how's it going? We're going to talk about forensics today. Again, most images were created with crayon.com, but some were taken from Wikipedia under the appropriate license. So today, we're going to first talk about some computer anatomy that will help us understand files more. Then we're going to talk about woke files. What are files like when you have a deeper understanding of what is really there? Talk about hidden files, metadata, files as hex, and magic bytes. And of course, we'll present you with the PicoGym problem set. So computer anatomy. You can think of computers in terms of layers. And this really is kind of a computer science trope. You see it all the time that to better understand what's happening in a computer, you can think of what's happening in different layers. This allows us for some element of abstraction, which means glossing over some of the details to get a better high level picture of what's going on. And this helps us create a mental model. I like to call it the mental model in our brain because it's what's happening between our ears that really matter when we're trying to understand what computers are doing. So the very first layer for computers is hardware. This is what kind of uh, laptop or smartphone that you have. And on that hardware is a certain operating system. And this operating system has a scheduler. That's one of the most important parts of an operating system is the part that schedules different tasks to run at different times. What we're really interested in is the file system how an operating system keeps track of files on a computer. And of course there's apps. These are user started tasks that do different things like notepad or an IDE or a game. And there can be a lot of those. So more specifically, I'm using my own computer for this example. I have an Alienware 17R4, so that's my hardware. It's a laptop. It's a gaming laptop. The operating system is Ubuntu 20.04, and that's a Linux distro. And it has a scheduler and a file system. The file system for Linux is ext. Then there's an app, Terminal. Uh, starting up the shell counts as an app on your operating system. So hardware, there's a pile of hardware. Hardware can be laptops. For example, my Alienware. Um, desktops, servers, tablets, Phones, these are all examples of different types of hardware. Operating system, there's the big three. There's Windows, there's Mac or Apple, and there's Linux. And I'm running Ubuntu 20.04. The scheduler. Now this is a very important part of the computer because it actually enables what's called concurrency or the appearance of multiple things happening at the same time. In a computer, nothing is really happening at the same time. It's more of an illusion because computers are so fast that they can switch between tasks very quickly to make it appear like multiple things are happening, which with multi-core processors, maybe there's a good argument to be made that multiple things are happening at the same time, but we won't get into that. In the file system, this manages files. It keeps track of location or path, it has a bunch of timestamps on files, it keeps track of the owner, different permissions, 
um, and of course the actual data of the file. So now woke files. The first concept that's important to know with computers is that every operating system that I'm aware of has concept of hidden files. These are usually implemented for protection and for discretion. Every operating system implements them differently. In Linux, to create a hidden file, you just start the file name with a period. In Windows, it's actual metadata or an attribute of the file that you can check on or off. And for Mac, it's similar to Windows. So I'll show a hidden file in Linux on my computer. If we were to go to this directory with the graphical method, it looks like there's three files here. If we were to go, if we were to go there with the shell, There's actually four files, the fourth one being .secret. It has a size of zero, so it's an empty file. And actually, with the graphical method, you can check a box to show hidden files, and then it will show .secret as well. Now for metadata. I already mentioned this in talking about how Windows implements hidden files as metadata. But let's define it. So there's a generic definition of metadata. And indeed, metadata is a term that is used a lot beyond computers. But it's defined as data about the data. Specific to file systems, let's say it's facts about the file. So let's take a painting, for example. A painting has metadata. The data, the normal data, is just the painting itself. But the metadata is the facts about the data, like who painted this? What medium did they use? When did they paint it? And various other possibilities. So with file systems in Linux, the metadata is owner, group, permissions, and timestamps. Windows, there's more. As I mentioned before, hiddenness is a metadata element in Windows. And Windows also has this interesting concept of alternate data streams which is basically a whole alternate file that can be stored on a file as metadata. So to see the metadata, use the dash L option to LS. And here we see, as we've covered before, permissions, type, owner, group, size, and the last modified timestamp. And I'll demonstrate how to do that graphically, which is relevant to accessing metadata in Windows and Mac. Right click, go to properties, and you'll see a lot of that same data, the size, the last modified timestamp, the permissions. And this is different metadata. What's the default application to open a file or a type of file? And here's some image specific metadata. 
So let's draw the distinction between file system metadata, which is managed by the file system, and it's located apart from the data. In particular, in Linux, it's located in inodes, but we'll get more into that in our uh, next lecture. There's also something that can be called file type metadata. And this is managed by the app that creates a file and it's actually located in the data. You can kind of think of this as a signature on a painting. That's metadata that's located in the data. So for JPEGs or images, you store this information in the header. And if we go to the Wikipedia page for that, scroll down, we'll see um, down here some metadata about the image, the extensity of pixels is stored in the header for files. And even a thumbnail is stored there as well. So let's demo a tool called EXIF tool. Now EXIF is actually a specific type of metadata, but EXIF tool is actually very good at getting all kinds of metadata. Let's look at hello. This is our typical hello world text. Let's use EXIF tool on it and see what it comes up with. So we can see this first line gives us the EXIF tool version number, which actually has nothing to do with the file. It's really just diagnostic information. And then next is the file name, which is a file system metadata. And same with this, and actually all these ones that start with file are all file system metadata. Some, other, some of these other ones are determined by the tool And it gives us a line count as well and word count. So let's try a JPEG, see what that comes up with. So that gives us a little more. We still have all these file system metadata. But now we're grabbing the JFIF version, which is a JPEG file image format. Um, we can see that's actually being grabbed from out of the file because that's stored here. And there's resolution, IPTC digest, which I'm not sure what that is. Copyright notice, Pico CTF. We're not actually a copyright notice. It's just a fun little field. XMP toolkit. Writes Pico CTF again. Uh, image width and height here. So there's a lot more metadata about images than there are about text files. And here's like the big reveal. So by default, when you open a file, there's a lot of interpretation happening. If I open this, I see an image, which is what I expect. It's a JPEG file. Um, but actually there's a way to open this file that doesn't do any interpretation at all.
So raw is another way to think about that. No interpretation. And use a hex editor to look at a file like that. So let's cat hello again. And it hasn't changed, still says hello world. Now let's open that with the hex editor, which we're going to use xxd. And there's, you can kind of think about it as this is what the computer sees when it looks at that file. Just a stream of numbers. And this is the ASCII interpretation of those numbers. But a text file is very simple. It really has nothing extra. It's just the text. This is kind of extra. This is a line feed character. And you can know that by going to ASCIItable.com. Right here, new line, line feed, zero A. Now let's try the image file, which is going to be a lot more complex. And we know if our input or our output runs off the screen, we can always pipe that to less and get a better interface to it. So this column is the offset into the file. And this group is the raw hex of the file. And this is the ASCII interpretation of that, of those numbers. Um, so you can see there's a lot of readable stuff in the beginning. I just press space a few times, it starts to get less readable. And this is where all the image information is. You kind of see some patterns sometimes like this, but it's hard to make any true sense of what that means. Now, if we go here, this is a list of all the magic bytes of files. And magic bytes are the bytes in a file that can identify what type of file a file is. Let's search for JPEG. So here it says the identifying bytes for JPEG is FFD8. And there we can see these bytes right here in this image file. And those are also called the start of image, FFD8. So you can see there's a lot of details here. And these are all details important to rendering a file correctly and being able to make sense of it. We'll go more into hex editors in our next lecture. For now, our PicoGym problem set is information, glory of the garden, and enhance. Good luck. <laughs>